I'm here today with Seema Aman, who's a Human Rights Fellow with the uh, Open Society Institute, Washington, D.C., an attorney who has been involved in um, fighting for the rights of detainees at Guantanamo, and today our subject is going to be torture. Uh, we have the famous John U. memos that were written basically, uh, as some argue, and I'll see if you disagree, to justify Bush-Cheney administration conducting torture. Um, as we look at torture and how the United States has carried that out, now we have a new president, Barack Obama, whom we're not sure, and again, the, the ACLU has come out and argued that Obama is still conducting torture. Uh, I guess what, what you know, we look, we look at torture and what's happening in the world. The United States, sort of the moral leader of the world, supposedly freedom and those things. What do you think of the long term effects uh, of our actions may be, or, and what are they right now? The damage is quite scary um, in terms of both internally as Americans, us not living up to our own values and our own standards. And I think we have, let me just say, I think we have a lot to do to reconcile that. I don't think that that part is over. Um, I personally wish the president would appoint a commission to look at what we've done so that we can come truth to terms. Commission. A truth commission. So that we can come to terms first and foremost with what was done in our name. In other words, hold the government accountable. And hold the government accountable, those that need to be held accountable as required by law, as required by our treaty obligations. Um, in terms of the long-term consequences, um, I think that the president has recognized that there has been somewhat of a fall from grace in terms of our international standing um, in the world due to our policies. And um, that's unfortunate, but um, when we go and torture individuals and, and yet have maintained that we are sort of a moral beacon and that we don't do that. I mean, that's problematic. And there's, of course, going to be um, um, consequences where those in the rest of the world don't see us in the same way. There's the blowback effect. Uh, we have a history in this co country of commandeering technology from the military, you know, tasers, tear gas. Now that drones, police departments are starting to use drones, my fear is we'll start condoning torture in our jails and some of that's already happened in some this of country. That is. Yep, yep, I think that's right. I think that some of it, first of all there's a history in this country of using excessive force in that way and prisons is one location where that happens. So um, I think what you're saying, you know, as well is that this is not this is not new and that these um, uh, if we're not careful, if we're not vigilant, um, and I think the Truth Commission goes to this, then there is a real possibility that despite the executive order banning torture, that these tactics and tools actually do continue to get widespread use. So I agree with you on that front. That is, that is scary. Well, we had the, uh, the so-called underwear bomber Christmas, and it was another bundling attempt in um, uh, Times Square in New York. People are afraid, and, and the argument I hear all the time is, well, we, we have to do torture if we're going to get information out of these people to find out other plots. So is that a justified argument for conducting torture, waterboarding, which I want to ask you about in just a moment, any form of torturing that we might be doing? I, I think, John, that um, there's been a number of senior counterterrorism experts um, and internal government agencies that have admitted that torture does not work. So leaving aside sort of the moral Well, there have been CIA, CIA, agents, have, CIA agents have come, come forward and said that information is unreliable. Right. So leaving aside the moral issue and even the legal issue, which we already know it's morally, we've, we've, there's a prohibition that we've all decided upon as a society legally there's a prohibition on this effectiveness argument issue um, I think there are a number of sources that say that it's not effective so while I I, I, um, I understand that we're in an environment of fear I think um, that that people who are concerned about counterterrorism and are concerned about intelligence gathering should also be concerned that torture is providing bad information. 
Now, John, you and others have argued that waterboarding is not torture, although certain segments of the military, such as the Navy SEALs, have quit doing it. They, they became concerned of its psychological impact on their military personnel. Uh, how do you respond to the fact that running from water down somebody's mouth and up their nose a few times, for whatever reason, is not really torture, it's just hmm. maybe a coerced environment to get to some information that may help keep America free and safe? Um, I think from what we know about waterboarding and the way it's been used and the number of times it's been used, so in the case of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed being used 183 times, it's more than just splashing a little water on someone's face. He was waterboarded 183 times. 183, to get information 183 out. times. 183 times. And I think that simulating drowning on an individual who is in fear of his life, that he's potentially going to suffer death, whether or not the interrogator intends that or not, must be, we must all agree that that must be psychologically damaging and tormenting to a point that we can't really sit here and understand. Um, so uh, I think that the egregious nature of waterboarding is something that, you know, all reasonable people must be on the same page And we page have the about. question of how far we will go. I mean, in testimony, John, you was asked, you know, whether he would, you know, take pliers and squeeze the test, you know, smash the, the testicles, testicles of a child to get the father to speak. He said yes, or it, wipe out a village. It billing. depends so on what the president wants It to depends do, right? on what the president wants. And we get back to maybe, to, maybe I want to talk about the imperial, imperial presidency, which we are, we have an imperial presidency right now, even under a Barack Obama. It's hard not to argue that that's happening. I mean, how are we going to hold the government accountable in these situations if there is no transparency? We don't know what they're doing. How in the world are we going to know to fight back, to stand up and fight these things? I think that um, what the torture episode in our history showed is that um, that we have a structural problem within the government in terms of internal checks and balances when it comes to the Office of Legal Counsel and what what was uh, these that, are where the memos came from and these exactly these are the memos and the fact that you. in the fact that you know it wasn't a place of neutral analysis of the law it was a place of certain policy objectives of extreme interrogation techniques that were then authorized okay so now how do we get to accountability or how do we get to checks and balances um, the courts is one way, and it's been one way in which information has been released through Freedom of Information Act. The ACLU has their whole FOIA project. But um, in my opinion, um, the most important thing is that we get citizens educated on these issues, activated, moved by them, um, caring about what the government is doing in their name, because it is in all of our names that this government is acted like this. And so we the people. We the people. And so um, and so and I, I'm confident that if Americans um, are engaged in these issues, do understand what happened, do understand how outrageous it was, they will be outraged and they will hold um, our political leaders accountable. I hope so. But I, I wonder because um, now this is the last question. Maybe we can sum up here. Uh, it's the moral issue we're involved. You're a Muslim American. I have to be a Christian. Uh, when I look at the fact that we would want to torture somebody, I look at people, I see people with great worth and dignity. Why would I want to torture anybody is the question. But there are a lot of people who just push that aside for utilitarian reasons. But isn't, at the end of the day, the moral issue, really the big issue, is how we view people? I, I do think that that is the big issue. I do think that that should stand alone as the argument against torture, which is that we're humans, everyone is entitled to human dignity. That's a principle that we all agree on, that's, that our country is founded upon. And for that reason alone, you know, being a Muslim does not mean that you should have any less human dignity than anyone else. Um, just like you wouldn't want your neighbor to be tortured, your mother, your brother, your sister. Or yourself. Or yourself, you know, similarly you wouldn't want others. Thank you very much, Sam. Oh, thank you.